Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hitting Hard. I, we have Christina Irwin and Mike Lackney. I am your host, and I, we have a co-host here. We have many things coming up t- for you tonight, a few topics, as well as something I wanted to mention to you. Uh, we actually have something that's going on in East Canton as we speak. Uh, they are actually the Maple Grove Haunters, along with the... Pu- Pirates of the Rusty Cutlass. They're building a haunt this year for Halloween. Um, I'm going to be mentioning more of that as the time goes along, getting closer to Halloween. So you definitely want to be on the lookout for that information. It's something that's kid-friendly, and you're not going to want to miss out. Um, And then along with that, we actually, again, we have Jason Brill, who I want to give a shout out to Jason. Hello, Jason. We miss you. Wish you could be here um, but he's actually the going to be the director for the Dual Phoenix Live, where we, of course, we go out to live events as well as businesses and tell them all what's going on. Mike, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? Very good. Very good. Um, you know, I, 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 something I've seen today, and I know I briefly talked to you about it before we, we went live, and I, something that just... I didn't know what to think about this at first. You like pizza? Of course. What's your favorite pizza place? Uh, I'd have to go with Pizza Hut or Domino's. Pizza Hut or Domino's? Yeah. Well, my favorite used to be Papa John's. One of them. Uh, until now. Well, at least as long as you're not in the Washington State area. And why is that? Well, just don't order uh, extra olives. Apparently... There was something going on in Washington State with a few locations at Papa John's in that area. Um, and it, it just cracks me up to think about this, why people will do this. But you actually have, they had an undercover uh, policeman that going on where they went to these pizza places, at Papa John's specifically, and they ordered pizza. And they waited out in their car and they just say, well, you know, I'm going to order some extra olives. Okay. Seems reasonable. You like olives. No big deal. You know, each their own. And then when they opened the box, they found cocaine. So apparently, if you ordered extra olives at this uh, Papa John's, lo- and it was just not one location, it was many, um, that you got drugs with it. Now... This article was on CNN, and I'm not I'm not making this up by any means. Which is, I, who would do that? You know, you order pizza, and what if it was a family? Yeah. Did, did you? Hey, kids, I got extra. Okay, that's not olives because that's white. Um, I think you got my order wrong. Well, that and what if it's. <laughs> A teenager that's buying pizza for a party that they're going to or, I don't know, just their friends because they're hanging out and they find the cocaine after they get home because, you know, you don't always check it when you get the thing immediately. So you get home, you check it, you're a teenager, you're already experimental, you're, you, you know, you're just a normal teen. What makes you think that they throw it away or report it to the police right away? Because I'm sorry, especially kids these days, do you really think they're going to do that? Or do you yeah. think they might try to sample it? And what's funny is they actually call the operation Operation Extra Olives, which is beyond me. <laughs> I mean, we're going to go on Operation Extra Olives. Um, great. Are we going to the grocery store here? What are we doing? <laughs> Uh, but apparently, then when they ran out of the drugs, then that's when those specific employees said, oh, well, here's my friends. They'll help you out. And they got them to a different Papa John store in the area. So it was a network of drug dealers. Oh, right. Nice. So I guess uh, the advice is don't go to Washington State and go to Papa John's and order extra olives so out of curiosity what did the owners of papa john's do about this well of course they fired them that's good (laughs) well right i mean (laughs) but and here's the thing when when they went inside they 
I, the detectives ultimately, and again, I'm quoting this directly from CNN. They said they found $28,000 in cash, cocaine, ecstasy, marijuana, oxycodone, LSD, methamphetamine. Okay, that, that's, that's not a kitchen. That was a kitchen. So it's not just cocaine they were dealing right. out. It's a whole slew of, okay. Exactly, exactly. Ugh. So apparently, you know, they, Papa John's, their statement to CNN, they said they have zero tolerance for this type of offense and illegal behavior. And the franchise apparently, and again, this is quoted, has confirmed that the employees involved with this situation are no longer employed and we apologize for the action. And the franchisee is working in full cooperation with local law enforcement to resolve this matter. And here I thought they were just making their ingredients better. <laughs> Apparently, they tried to make it better, but it didn't work because the extra olives turns out it wasn't extra olives at all. But apparently, they found residue of cocaine by the washing area and the cash, the cashier, the register, and that. So, so potentially, yeah. they were sampling their own product too. It's possible. Nice. That's what I want: is a tripped out junkie making my pizza. Well, you know, they say, you know, the the food, that if you put love into your food, it's going to taste better. Apparently, they took that to heart. I suppose. <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, so, you, just, you know, be careful when you order a pizza out there. You know, you never think that something like that would happen, but apparently, it could. Um, another thing we've got, uh, I wanted to talk about, that. it does relate to this area as well. Mm-hmm. And it's something having to do with healthcare. And before you think I'm going to go into a law and bring out all this information, well, I'm not. Um, I'm actually talking about a Canadian nurse who confessed to killing mean patients. Now, I don't know about you, but why would you? Okay, so somebody's mean. Okay, I get it. You know, we de- when you deal with customer service, you deal with, you know, rude, mean customers every day. But these patients were in assisted living. So they could handle, to some extent, basic daily li- living. They just needed help. And as um, we had just shown, actually, the woman a moment ago, Elizabeth Wetlofer, that's her name. She actually poisoned eight patients over seven years and apparently she said that god told her to do it oh nice god told her to do it let me tell you folks in case you didn't know okay murder in the bible is not necessarily an uncommon thing but typically god doesn't go to one person and say hey You should kill all these people since you don't like them, and they're always rude to you anyway, right? So, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Just just kill them. It's fine. It's fine. They're the ones. They're the ones. They're, They're chosen to die. Who in their right fucking mind would think that their holiest of holy would be telling you to commit one of the seven deadly sins? Just saying. And these people were... In the ages from 75 to 90, you know, they've, I'm, I'm assuming that some of them have probably left, led great lives. Um, this was actually in Ontario, by the way. And it's, it's sad to think that, you know, something like that essentially could happen here. I mean, you put a relative into a facility and say, you know what, I can't take care of you, but this place will be able to and you can still live a full life. And then something like this happens. Well, unfortunately, and this is straying off the topic a little bit, but that used to happen in the U.S. all the time. In psychology, they teach you about the different things that they used to do, such as experiments and such that either were or weren't successful. And a big one of these, especially in the 50s and uh, I think either the 40s and the 60s as well, was homosexuality being a disease. They thought that these people were infected by a disease called homosexuality, and to cure it, they tried things such as 
um, shock therapy, which is basically they hook stuff up to your head and shock mm-hmm. your brain to try and yeah, kind of refresh it. Uh, guess what? It didn't work. And um, they also did things such as submit you to physical and mental distress by making you uh, touch yourself to heterosexual pornography. Guess what? Didn't work either. Apparently, she had actually tried to, and the story continues on CNN. And again, I'm getting this information from CNN. So if you question if anything that I'm telling you is incorrect, please go to that site. Um, if you want to comment, please let us know. Um, you know, it's it's insane that someone would do this. And apparently, you know, again, she tried to do this, killed more people. And then after a while, even though she says she knew there to deal from right from wrong she knew the difference but then after a while if she killed five people she began to doubt god was telling her to kill and maybe it was the devil she thought after five okay someone's telling you to kill somebody obviously it shouldn't take five people to kill for you to realize that apparently there's i mean i'm there's got to be some sort of a serious mental issue going on there and they they need to look into that um but that's just she faces life in prison and to be all honest with you she's gonna be sentenced later this month and i believe that she she deserves it um that's not something that i mean i would be mortified if i put a family member in there and they gave her too much insulin which by the way that's exactly what had happened they purposely gave him too much insulin and then, oh, well, five people are gone. God told me to do it, so I'm going to kill these five people. And, oh, yeah, by the way, um, maybe God didn't tell me to do it. Maybe it's just the little voices inside my head. Maybe. I'm insane. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. Is there birds chirping? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I mean, seriously, five people, you know they're the difference between right and wrong, okay? So, at that point in time, if you know the difference between right and wrong and you're hearing voices and you believe it's from God telling you to kill people, at that point, don't you think you should just say, you know what, I need to get help, and I need to get help now? Yeah. Especially, and I hate to make this a religious thing, because religion is a very, very touchy subject. And we're not going to go into that. But the fact of the matter is, she told everybody that God told her to do it, which means that she had to have been religious at some point. Now, whether she was Christian or uh, Catholic or Jew or whatever, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is she was religious to an extent. And in every Bible or other holy book that I've ever set eyes upon, never once did it say, I shall tell you who to kill my son. Ever. I just, it's... It puts you in the thought of, you know, how are my, you know, if you had somebody in a nursing facility, you go, oh, well, I better go check on them. Something like this happened. I better make sure that I check on them a lot more often, make sure they're okay. Yeah. Because insulin is not something that you would check for. Insulin, you know, you have uh, a sugar problem, diabetes, but she gave illegal doses. So would they be able to tell? Yes. How long they would be able to tell, that I don't know. But you definitely have to take care of your loved ones, um, whether that's just by checking in on them from time to time um, as much as you can and just say, hey, you know, I'm here, everything, are you okay? Yeah, and I don't know if any of you guys at home or you, Christina, have ever had low blood sugar. Yes. But it's not very fun. It's actually kind of painful to an extent. So with that much insulin, it was not a peaceful death. So you can't say, well, at least they died happily. No, they did not. No, no. But moving on from that topic, I do want to get to um, our last topic of the night, which is pretty important, and it could affect us here in the United States as well. And what that is is actually the London terror attack that had happened just as of the other day um there was a white van and we're actually going to post a link to the prime minister from england on later on after the show we're going to post that link 
But the Prime Minister, apparently, she's, she's telling us exactly what had happened. And I did watch the video. But apparently there was a white van who had ran over uh, people on the street. And these, these people that were in the van at some point in time got out. They were wearing belts that were like for suicide type bombers. Mm -hmm. And they stopped at some facility. I don't know if it was some store. I don't know, remember what store it was. But they started pulling knives out and just stabbing people. Uh, according to CNN, it was uh, bars and other shops. Bars, okay, thank you. And so they started stabbing people. Now, they were wearing these belts. They looked like they had bombs not on them. You Now, if anybody knows the England police, they just ha they have batons. They don't carry, you know, guns or anything like that. Um, so apparently they came very quickly. But obviously if you were there, it would never be quick enough. Right. Um, and then they apparently shot 50 rounds, which ended up killing the three people who had done this. And now it's just, this could happen over here at any time. Yeah. Anytime. I don't know. That just... I, I mean... You have to have some sort of a mental disability to get with a group of friends or just people that you know or even people that you don't know and say hey let's go kill a bunch of people very very vin uh, viciously i mean getting ran over by a car and killed again is not a very fast death it's typically pretty slow because you're crushing the innards of the other person i would uh, i'm not going to wish ill on anybody because that's not why i'm here however if they could even experience half of the pain that their victims go through, it makes me wonder if they would rethink even doing it before before it happens. But the fact of the matter is, these people injured, according to CNN, 48 different people with their van, then got out and proceeded to stab people in bars, restaurants, and stores, and then wore fake bomb belts and well they weren't very shocked at the police's response well who the hell would be if you're wearing a bomb fake or not and you just ran people over and stabbed people yeah you're gonna get shot well and here's the other thing i mean the isis linked amok agency claimed a detachment of again this i'm quoting this directly from cnn Detachment of Islamic State fighters carried out the attack, but the CNN terrorist, or I'm sorry, terrorism analyst Paul Cruikshank cautioned that ISIS has provided no evidence to back up its claim. Amok also claimed ISIS was behind the attack at a resort in Manila last week. So, you know, again, ISIS is linked to this Amok agency. They're saying, yes, you know, this is where it's from. They can't say it's credible, but yet we still have this ISIS, 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 terrorism everywhere. In England, in Manila, we've had it in, um, I mean, where else? I mean, it's all over. And that's just like what I said last week. This can happen here. We, Our police can only do so much because... They're only, we're only funded to have so many police. So, you know, we can only depend on them so much. We also have to look out for ourselves as well. Let's also be honest here. Um, who cares if it's ISIS or not? The fact no, of the matter, matter is, is it's a terrorist group and they killed people and hurt a bunch of others and probably mortified their family members. I mean, I'm just... Like I said, this can happen today. This could happen tomorrow. It can happen anytime. And we have to understand that even though, you know, we live in the United States, it could just well as happen here. I mean, you had the concert over in England. Now this. I mean, it makes you think, okay, well, if I go to a local Walmart or if I go to say a gas station or if I go to Starbucks is somebody gonna come up and start stabbing people 
I don't know. Um, <laughs> one thing that I do know is my job that I work at, I'm not going to name any names here, but the job that I work at is actually making us watch a video about active shooters every three months now. Um, whether it has something to do with a shooting that may or may not have happened at one of the, the job sites, I don't know. Or if it's linked to all the terrorist attacks, I, I, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is even corporations are scared. Even corporations are forcing us to watch these videos to ensure that we know what to do should something like that happen. Yeah, and I want to give a quick shout out to um, my good friend Ivy Cortman as well as Jason Brill. I know you're watching, so hi, Jason. Thank you. Um, so again, you know, this is something that we have to be prepared for. Um, you know, and it's basically just keeping your eyes open at this point. You got to keep your eyes open. You know, you have to be aware of your surroundings. And I'm not saying that, you know, everybody's got a gun. Everybody's carrying a gun. Well, you know what? There's a lot of peaceful gun carriers around. Not everyone is a terrorist. Yeah. But you have to be aware of your surroundings. So if something looks off, you're, you're going to question it. Because yeah. you're going to know right away. And a lot of times, you could be the one to prevent something like this. And I'll be the first to admit, I do own guns. I, I own quite a few guns and I'm not going to make that stupid BS excuse of I own guns because they make me feel safe. No, I own guns because I fucking like guns. It's just the way that it is. <laughs> um, I am going to get my concealed carry soon and I've open carried before and do I feel safer with a gun? Well, hell yeah I do. Because if somebody else has a gun, do you know how hard it is to get close enough to them to disarm them? Because I'm here to tell you, if they're a good enough shot, it doesn't matter how fast you run. Yeah. I feel a lot safer with an, a piece by my side to fire back. And if that makes you feel bad or if that makes you feel uneasy, I'm sorry. But I'm the one that's going to be saving your ass when they pull a gun on you. And that's exactly the point. You know, and not everybody feels comfortable with guns. I get that. Yeah. I get that. You know, and... If you don't feel comfortable, don't operate one. It's right. as simple as that. Right. And I'm not saying to go out there and get a gun. No. Just just be, like I said, just be on the lookout for it because it could happen. Um, and it's always better to be prepared and for nothing to happen than for something to happen and you not to be prepared. Uh, so I do want to... Um, move on from there I, you know this has been since we've started this program hitting hard there's been a lot of changes um, again with Jason Brill going to Dual Phoenix Live uh, and, and we're going to be having some shows coming up with that we're getting that uh, pulled together for the lineup of the shows for that so I'm not going to get too deep into that because I want to make sure that uh he gets all the the credit and everything that he deserves for that. So that's a good thing coming up. Um, Mike, do you have anything to add for tonight's show? Yes. Um, <coughs> for anybody that is watching uh, live and anybody that watched in the No live, uh, you may have noticed some um, lag. Uh, we are in the process of fixing that, and we do apologize. Uh, for yes. those of you on YouTube, don't worry about it because you're not going to get any. But for those of you watching live, do know that we do, or we are aware of it, and we are planning to fix it soon. We apologize for that. And a lot of times, too, just for tonight's show, a lot of times when you're watching it live, you're not, it is, like he said, it is lagging. Uh, but you, if you do go back to it later on and try and pull it up, it's already been loaded up in the feed. Yeah. So you'll be able to watch it without the lag. Um, but that's about all I have for tonight. If anybody has any comments or questions, please do not hesitate uh, to let us know what those are. Again, this is a show that you can communicate to us. Tell us what your opinions are. If you think something should be done, um, whether, you know, you're going, well, what we should do this to make ourselves feel safer, or we should do that. Let us know. 
this isn't, you know, a show where it's all about us. And so I want to make sure that your voice gets heard because that's what we are here for is you guys. So, again, the Maple Grove Haunters, you want to keep your eye out for them uh, with the Pirates of the Rusty Cutlass and that haunt that they are currently building for Halloween. And, of course, Dual Phoenix Live with Jason Brill. So, Mike? Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.